Here's the problem that we're going to solve today. Not, not the tiny whoop itself. The problem is the receiver on the tiny whoop. It's an express LRS receiver. That, that's not a problem. That's a good thing. The problem is that the very first thing that I do with every express LRS receiver that I get is I flash it to get it on the latest firmware and to make sure it's got my configuration, my bind phrase, and so forth. And that is a little bit of a problem because some people find it annoying having to flash your express LRS receiver, but that's not the problem that we're trying to solve today. The problem is... I don't know what Express LRS target to flash this guy to. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. When I say target name, what do I even mean by that? Here in Express LRS Configurator, before you flash, you'll go and pick the device category and the device that you're flashing. And that's the target name for the device that you're flashing. If you flash the wrong target to a piece of hardware, it'll stop working. You can easily get it to work again by just reflashing it with the right target, but the process of reflashing it after you flash the wrong target can sometimes be a little more cumbersome than usual. In some cases, it's fairly obvious what the correct target name is for the device that you're flashing. For example, pretty much all the Radio Master hardware is just right here. You just look up the receiver or module that you're using, and boom, that's probably the target that you should flash. But in some cases, the target is not obvious. Like, what's the correct target for this newbie drone BLV4 flight controller? Sometimes you can find it on the product page for the device, but if we look on the product page for this newbie drone tiny whoop, I don't see it. Like, if it was going to be anywhere, it'd be here in the specifications. We got the flight controller, we've got the ESC Blue J target, sure. That's not what we're looking for. And if we click on the flight controller, is it going to be there? No. Nowhere here do we find the Express LRS target name. Manufacturers, do better. Newbie drone, should really be here. The Betaflight flight controller target and where to download the firmware, the ESC target, the Express LRS target, it should all be on the product page. There's no reason for it not to be there. Here's the next thing that I do when I'm in this situation. I power up the receiver. In this case, it's just built into the flight controller so I can just plug in USB. And then I wait. On the receiver, there is going to be a status LED, and it's going to start out slow blinking. And then, after 20 to 60 seconds, it will start fast blinking, and that will indicate that the receiver has gone into Wi-Fi mode. While we're waiting for that to happen, a couple of caveats. First of all, if you have previously flashed the receiver, you could have configured it not to go into Wi-Fi mode, in which case what I'm about to show you isn't going to work. Also, if the receiver binds to a controller that is powered up, it won't go into Wi-Fi mode, but then you probably wouldn't have this problem. In that case, you can go into the Express LRS Lua script, and there's an option to manually kick the receiver into Wi-Fi mode, or you could just turn your controller off and power cycle the receiver. Aha! There we go. We got a fast blinking blue LED. That's probably is what we're looking for. The other caveat is that if you have an SPI-based receiver on your all-in-one flight controller, what I'm about to show you isn't relevant, and I'll talk more about that a little later in the video, but most people are using serial receivers these days. So once the receiver's gone into Wi-Fi mode, we're going to take a look here at our Wi-Fi networks, and we should see the Express LRS RX Wi-Fi network. That is a hotspot that is being broadcast by the receiver, and we're going to go ahead and connect to it. The password is Express LRS all lowercase. Now I'm doing this on my desktop. You can also do this with a phone. If you don't have a desktop handy, you could do it with whatever kind of Wi-Fi enabled device. As long as it's got a web browser, you could do it. After I connect to that Wi-Fi network, a web browser might automatically open and go to the page we're looking for. If it doesn't automatically open, then I'm going to manually open a web browser and go to 10.0.0.1. And that will take me to the web page of the receiver itself. And from here, we can see the target name of the firmware that is on the receiver and the firmware version as well. Also, this is an easy, I think it's the easiest way to actually update the firmware is to do it through the web browser instead of the other ways, which sometimes have little quirks that don't work. Now that we know that firmware name, NBD2400RX, we can go to the Express LRS configurator and we can look. And um, is it newbie drone? No, it's not there. Well, what about... Uh, NBD, no, it's not there. Yeah, so, and it's not there. This isn't me making some mistake. This receiver is so brand new that the target hasn't been added to Express LRS yet. 
Here is a thing you can try in this case. It's not going to work, but sometimes it does work. Instead of using the official releases, you can go to Git branch and you can go to the Git branch master, which will pull code down from the actual GitHub repo where the devs are currently working. Don't do this because this code is not tested. It can have bugs, it can have problems, but we can at least look for newbie drone. No, it's not there. NBD, no, it's not there. Yeah, so at the very least, this would tell us whether this firmware was sort of in the works. And if you were very brave and wanted to risk running buggy code, which you totally shouldn't do. You shouldn't run buggy code for your receiver, but you could theoretically download and flash this firmware if that was something that you felt like you could do safely. Another thing you need to be aware of is oftentimes manufacturers will ship a device with a firmware labeled DIY, DIY, et cetera, et cetera. You can see all these targets here. And a lot of times when you go into your web browser, you'll see that firmware DIY something, something, something. DIY is just a very generic firmware that manufacturers might use before they have an official target in the repo. In that case, you would want to flash the official target with the manufacturer's name, not the DIY target, although the DIY target probably would work too but it's best practice to flash the official manufacturer target. But what am I gonna do now? Because I can't flash this with my binding phrase and there, there simply isn't any way for me to do that. If they had shipped it with ExpressLRS 3.0, I could have just put my binding phrase into the web page. ExpressLRS 3.0 lets you do that, but ExpressLRS 2.5 didn't have that feature yet. There is a way to bind an ExpressLRS receiver without putting a binding phrase in. I've got a video I made about that, and I guess that's what I'm going to have to do. I'll put a card on screen with a link to that video if you would rather try that method. Um, the other thing that you need to know is that all of the stuff I'm talking about doesn't apply if you have an SPI-based ExpressLRS receiver. And if you're not sure what the difference between SPI and serial-based receivers and the pros and cons are, I'll put a card on screen about that as well. See you there.